Oh, which I've written a book on, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, there's my lovely wife, Brigitta. She couldn't make it this trip. We came in September to San Francisco and stayed with Brenda and are about to wait. And uh, it's fantastic, lovely city. And uh, she's the love of my life. And the uh, when he was talking this morning, I was just I had to go thank him because we got into Men from Mars, Women from Venus early in our <laughs> relationship. <laughs> and so we've been happily married for 16 years. And uh, actually, the work that I do allows me to listen a lot. And so this work is very great, by the way. If you have a relationship, you want a relationship, do this work, because especially for men, because your wife or your spouse will want to talk to you. And this is a great way to allow them to express exactly where they're at. And, and for men, it's more left brain. They can sort of see, yeah, this is make, we're making progress. We're doing you know, this and that. And so it's great for both sexes to have, because it, it really works for us. And this is my cat, Mr. Pookie. Now, Mr. Pookie is the smartest cat I know because A, he gets everything he wants, and B, doesn't do a damn thing. <laughs> Except look cute, as you can tell. And what I do in my spare time is I ride a unicycle. And that's me out at the park riding a unicycle. Uh, I'm riding for charity, by the way. This is called the Thousand Mile Project. We're going to do this to uh, help bring in money for uh, Nepalese orphans in this Himalayan Children's Charities org. But if you go to thousandmileproject.org, you can see some videos of me riding around Stone Mountain, a few other crazy places. But anyway, I have a link to the, the children's charities that I do, and I'm riding a thousand miles in a year just to sort of do that. For a 58-year-old guy, I guess that's that's a pretty good deal. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. I've also written a book. Um, the Logical Soul. Dr. Wade has been so generous to write a foreword to the book. And I've got a couple of, or a few copies that are hidden under there. I've got to bring them out. They'll be available after the talk. Now, getting into the technique itself, a little bit of background, only a couple of minutes here to explain exactly how this came about. And one of my inspirations was Abraham Maslow. Um, those of you in psychology know exactly who this is. Essentially, Maslow, back in the mid-40s, uh, came out with a paper which described his theory of motivation. And he did something a little different in psychology at the time. He studied normal people instead of dysfunctional people. Up until that time, a lot of psychology revolved around the study of, you know, catatonics and manic depressives and, you know, schizophrenics, things like that. He said, well, what would happen if you study the highest of humanity instead of the dregs of humanity. What, you know, what can we learn from that? And that's what he did. And so Abraham Maslow started studying people, and he came up with this concept of self-actualization, which you may be familiar with, the, uh, the hierarchy of needs, which means that the basis of those needs have to do with what do you really need to survive? You know, you need, you need to breathe. You can't last a minute without breathing. You need food, you need water, sex, sleep, homeostasis, excretion. These are all basic needs that everyone has. Going up on the pyramid, we have safety, security, uh, body employment, resources, morality, the family. And these are all things that everyone, male or female, have a priority of needs, which some more than others were focused on. Now, obviously, if you, have, if you can breathe, you don't need to worry about that because you know you're breathing. If you have enough water, food, sex, sleep, homeostasis, and excretion, those are all taken care of. You don't need to worry about it. But if you don't have that, obviously you're going to pay attention to that. Now, as we go higher in the pyramid, it becomes increasingly important to understand that unless we've addressed the more basic aspects of this hierarchy of needs, we're not going to be able to skip over some of them. If you try to skip over basic needs, your body, your subconscious mind, or this inner being, whatever you're talking about, is going to give you a hard time. Anybody have that feeling that sometimes you've got somebody inside just fighting everything you do? Anybody ever felt like that? Or like addictions are like that. If you're addicted, you got to have, you know, it's like your body's looking for something. 